YouTube, what's going on? Well, found some good cars. They were local. I didn't have to get them online. Pretty much the ones that just came out within weeks. We're talking about Greenlight and Auto World. Found them local. Didn't have to get them from the scalpers or just a little bit of a markup online sometimes, especially with Auto World. So I'm glad I was patient and I found some good stuff. So let's start out with some uh, overseas company talking about Tomica this one was on the pegs you know what I passed it the first time and then they disappeared and then I saw them again and I did end up getting it so talking about this little bad boy a Jiminy Suzuki Jiminy which is like the old uh uh, samurais basically from when we had them over here what they look like back in the day overseas they were called Jimneys. now this is a vehicle that's not sold here anymore unfortunately but uh, it's still sold in many many countries including obviously Japan suspension now those wheels and tires, plastic, but they remind me of the old days. Those old uh, Yat Ming type cars that you'd get at the drugstore. But this one has the suspension. One of the few current makers of die casts that still do the suspension. There's a lot of, um, basically they kind of like went to ultra realistic and, and or they'll go to like toy like but the toy ones have to be so cheap they can't afford to put any extra parts on the thing and these are five, about five bucks when you get them at the store great detail on this and i'm sure this is a normal four-wheel drive type small truck probably a four-cylinder based maybe even a three-cylinder uh, diesel stick shift automatic i'm sure is available that kind of vehicle little tiny thing you know, the Samurai, when it was here, was very small, and it got uh, kind of a bad press because uh, top-heavy, very light, and uh, obviously you could roll it pretty simply by doing pretty any rough movement with the steering wheel at high speed. That thing would be on two wheels. So, yeah, suspension, plastic base, just a normal little thing, cool lime green color. A little... Suzuki Jimny. This would be probably a. Uh, let me see if I can see the dashboard here. So right-hand drive, of course. Simple black interior. Very skinny tires. And there's the box. So first on the agenda, little Suzuki. Next, we'll go look at uh, some green light. So here's a casting that's been around. Um, for a little bit, but this is the first 73 164 scale Ford truck I have. Uh, I think the earliest one they've done on this new newer casting for this year has been a 75. So this is a 73, very similar to the 75 grill. And it's got their little uh, dog dish hubcat wheels, steel with a hubcat. This one had a little blemish on it. Take a look here. So, interesting. Almost thought it was this was gonna be a truck that had like weathering done, but it just has uh, some of the underpaint showing through. I think the white was applied on top of the uh, orangish burnt orange color probably a factory color I'm thinking let's take a look at that grill some of the black wash that they apply stayed on some of the chrome but I'll get that wiped off pretty easily very very nice the modular -ness of these castings really lend themselves to a lot of these American cars that really didn't change much except for the the grills during these periods and some trim and things like that which can easily be done with just changing your tampo 
say it has the Ranger designation hitch, and you get your plastic bed cover, which we'll look at in a second. Look at that. You can see the depth on that tailgate. Deep bed. You can see the ribs in there. See the bolts for the body, how it attaches to the frame. Uh, later trucks, they figured how to do this where you weren't putting a fastener through the bed. You know, that would cause it to prematurely rust. There's a slider. And then these are enclosed windows, and this has a little bit of a overrun on the paint. You can see. Might have to take this truck apart and kind of fix it up a little bit. So here's your tonneau cover. You can see how they molded the ribs in it. Typical one, two, three, four, probably a five rib. Then you get the frame. And then the, or maybe just the three ribs and then the frame. I put one of these together one time a long time ago. One of the cheaper ones you had to build yourself to put on the truck. <laughs> It turned out okay. It actually did did fine. Just gotta remember, don't tighten anything down until everything has been adjusted. <laughs> That's the name of the game. All right, some nice nice truck. I'm probably gonna lift this truck, and it's gonna be customized. I really am not a huge fan of the stance on these two wheel drive trucks that Greenlight does. It's just too low. Tires a little bit small, so. It's gonna get gone through. So there she is, 1973, first year for this body style. 72 is the other body. All right, and of course I've talked about engines in the past and everything like that. Six cylinder all the way to big blocks on that truck. All right, another green light casting, all right. Um, so this has been around, but I, I found it, and uh, you know what, hold on, let's back up a minute. This is a blue collar series, so I'll just remind everybody what series it is. It's series six. So on the 73 Ford, just so you know, if you like the this series, and these are the cars that come in it. And got I found another one that we'll look at in a little bit. Go into the newer castings later. All right, so I found this, another 18 licensed car, 77 Le Mans four-door. There's some of your A-team stuff right there. All right, so this is in silver and it's got full wheel covers on it instead of the steel dog dishes that uh, were on the squad cars. And then also Buford's car, he has the the full Pontiac wheel cover. This is more like a generic setup. And it's painted all silver. The grill and headlights are kind of a clear plastic that they paint. So the whole thing is one kind of unit, it looks like, and then they'll paint it. Let's take a zoom on it. Might even, many of you may have this casting already. This is a good one. The metal of the body goes through to the bottom, so the point of the nose is body. So we're going to pick this out because I'm going to go to the other car I finally found, which is the Safari Wagon. I was waiting for that, and I found that locally too. So we're going to compare this. I thought maybe the casting would be very similar, but it's completely different in many respects to this four-door car that we all are familiar with. They're doing Greenline's newer tire. This is that big vinyl tire kind of thing. And... That full wheel cover, and it looks like this wheel has been used on the Dodge van uh, casting that they have. I mean, I don't have that casting because it's one of the narrow vans, so I'm not particularly fond of it, but I believe that's the same wheel that they've had. But it looks great in this, and actually this wheel cover would look good also on a Monaco Fury. 164th as their full size wheel cover. It would look good if you wanted to customize the car and put a vinyl top on it and stuff like that, make it look like a civilian version. We got the scallop here. So, Le Mans and uh, 
uh, Grey Le Mans, things like that. Uh, they had that scallop. That was a Pontiac thing. And this was on the Colonnade body style, which was this newer A-body General Motors car. Basically, they made this Colonnade frame, as they called it, quote-unquote. So this would underpin the Chevelle Malibu, um, all the wagons. Buick, Oldsmobile shared this, too. Uh, Olds Cutlass was on this, and then the Buick uh, Skylark, I think, and the Centurion. Those type of cars on the on the same platform, but the Le Mans also had it. They also shared the wagon through all those makes as well. Cadillac didn't use this body, but uh, Buick, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, and Chevrolet, they all carried this. This was a new concept for Chevrolet. This was a body on frame car. But the colonnade roof was a, basically a, a very strong roof to prevent rollover um, deaths as much as possible. Uh, of course, you got to wear your seatbelt too. But the roof was was much stronger for rollover situations. So when the car flipped over, this was a lot stronger. A lot of the older style roofs were more for style. Safety was becoming very important to the federal government. And it was requiring cars to fit a lot of different standards. The one of that was one of them. They were trying to get ahead of the federal regulations. But the other thing, too, is the bumpers were growing because it went from 2 mile an hour standard to about a 5 mile per hour standard without damage. So the bumpers got a lot bigger, too. This was a good concept, though. So they got rid of the convertible for the intermediates and they got rid of the two door hard top cars, which were basically a pillarless hard top, which was just windows there. And that roof structure, of course, would be pretty weak. So, But these windows go down. There was a frameless door. So the door would open. And then the window would go into the, the roof, basically, like this. So the A and B and C pillar and all that stuff. So, very interesting time period. And you could see a lot of the... In this time, you could really see the commonality that General Motors was doing and sharing platforms with all the different cars. This is a 4669. Le Mans, uh, on the four-door, but unlike the wagon, but you could get a six-cylinder, you can get a manual transmission on this car. You could also do a bunch of V8s. You could do a five-liter V8. So 77, they were doing like a Buick old uh, blocks Oh, Pontiac blocks 301s, which is their 5 liter, and 66400 block. Uh, 455, it looked like um, instead of the Can Am, basically this car has dropped. I mean, uh, they were getting 350, 305s, or 301 5 liters, 2 and 4 belt carburetors, that kind of stuff. So, that kind of stuff was optional on this one. And this actually has an opening hood. So, this is going to be another difference when we go to the wagon take a look at this all black in there I don't think they painted anything under that at all you can see the giant air cleaner on that the one thing I didn't think was correct is that trim line that goes around that scalp which I was trying to get to earlier I never saw any trim that was actually surrounding that like that. There would be a body line here. It seems like they did that to accentuate that, but it almost like, it looks like it's trim. And it carries on even to the police cars. I have a Pontiac here. That was just uh, basically uh, an NYPD one that's been in the collection. It does the same thing. This one has the Le Mans right there. And they got rid of that on the, the wagon. So, so let's take a look at the wagon while we're talking about it. So this is a um, hitch and tow car. Looks like they debuted this car this wagon, I'm gonna leave the four door here for a minute. This is series 18 already, pitch and tow. 
So they debuted this 77 Le Mans Safari with a utility trailer. And this is the other cars in the series. A couple of new castings. I think the, the Wrangler and the Silverado are new. Um, so yeah, so there's that. Let's drive her over here. I love the color, it's gold. <laughs> so it looks really cool. It's got the correct wheel covers that are on. Buford car, which I'm gonna get real quick. I have this on display. It's a package. So I'm gonna leave the Buford car back there for a minute. So it comes with the trailer. This is a completely different casting. Um, everything about it's been revamped, uh, retooled. You can see the, the side panels are completely smooth. Compared to the four door, the window, it's all uh, windows here, and there's no window on the front there. That's different. This doesn't have an opening hood, this one does. And then the way they construct the front grill, we'll look at the trailer in a second. It's been a trailer that's been in other, other uh, packages. So, they went completely to the painted front end. Now this is still a plastic insert like this one, but it's not clear. If you look at both of them, this has always been very dark on all their cars. You can see also it's very dark on this one. Actually, I think this is a 76. So you can see the difference in the grill. So the police car is a 76, but uh, same construction. You can see how dark the headlights look. This one looks a lot better. And again, with 164 scale, you kind of not sort of have to pick and choose what you want to bring to the table in terms of detail. And then when your eye looks at it, I would say that I would prefer looking at that front end versus this one. It seems to be picked out better. There's a little bit less gaps in the way that it fits too. And <laughs> light bars coming off, I know. Secured that. I got a few of these. Um, you can see there's a, and actually there's a large gap too with the hood panel line. So I do like the gold one. I like this wagon. Everything on these cars was engineered to be swappable, even though they would do the dog house, meaning this whole front area and the hood and the, the grill and the headlights and everything would be specific to the brand. This this one being a Pontiac, but they all shared this roof line. So the Buick, the Chevy, the Pontiac, the Oldsmobile cars. Same, almost the same tailgate door too. Different trim was applied. But this whole roof line, that was all with the same stamping. A lot of the glass was the same. Doors, many times were the same. Sometimes they changed the door skins. But a lot of it was to reduce cost. It worked brilliantly. People still, you know, would, <laughs> would get the brand because they like this or that. But it was pretty much the same vehicle. You could get certain trims, certain specific options only on one of the cars versus the others. But it was small things. Sometimes the engine and drivetrains would be slightly different between the vehicles. Etc. Wheels and tires, things like that. But for all intents and purposes, basically the same experience. You know, if you were to sit in the same engine group and just sit in a Buick Oldsmobile Pontiac driving them, it'd be very similar. Very, very similar experience. So you can see all these cars back then, they had the taillights in the bumper. It was not on the tailgate. This is a metal tailgate. I thought they would do, you know, plastic, but uh, it's metal. The, uh... This airfoil here, a little slightly crooked, it's a little bit higher on this side than it is on this side. Which I'm going to take it off and fix that. Tight fit though, it does have the dog leg hinge, but it stays up. Now these cars, you could seat six in the front two rows, and then I think another two or three in the back as well. And uh, they would have the uh, jump seats back there as an option. Now this car is a Le Mans Safari, and they also had a Catalina Safari, so a Grand Safari, big boy. 
but the, that was on their full size. This is on their Colin 8A platform. So a little bit smaller. Now the wagons in 1977, you can only get an automatic transmission. You can only get uh, two different V8s. You could get the the five liter, and then 77, it went to the 301. I guess it was a different block before that, but small block, and you get the uh, two barrel carb or four barrel, I think. And then uh, the 6.6400 block was the top for 77 motor. So you can get a 400 in this car, which was the 6.6 with the four barrel. So that did pretty good. Of course, it was choked out by then in the late 70s. Everything was emissions heavy. Let's zoom in one more time. I just want to show you the tampo work. It says Le Mans on the quarter. It's got the correct Pontiac wheel covers. This is a Le Mans Safari, like I was saying. They also had a Grand Le Mans Safari, which was the up-level trim. It might even have wood grain on it. Pontiac offered their rally wheels on this car as well, so you can get that as an option. And a lot of other different things. So, very excited to have this. This is the first one, I guess, that Greenlight's going to put out. And then they're going to have an estate wagon series of these cars. So, they're coming out the next one or the one after that. They're going to have these in just their single pack without having to get the trailer. And when we look at the trailer, it's just their simple utility trailer. Plastic rails, solid die-cast metal um, frame going out to the the part where it hitches up plastic fenders and plastic little gate there little ramp gate so very simple and it's got the little wagon wheel steel wheels hitches up nice to the wagon tuned to uh, very excited to have this car can't wait for the other ones another line of wagons to collect <laughs> poor wagons so let's park this one back and then we can see the Buford car again. So I would say in, in different castings, just to hit the point one more time, I think that their revision to do the, this style grills lot turns out, I think looks a little bit better than these other ones. Of course they were able to use their excellent wheel covers again. So that didn't change. Just growing the family of Pontiacs here at Meg's place. All right, next, let's take a look at some other stuff. Let's park these over here like that. Get these sample cars over here. All right. That wagon's awesome. Very excited to have that car. Very, very excited. All right, so. Now. A casting that I've been after for ever and ever. Uh, you would have think someone like me, especially with that likes wagons so much, would have had this already in the collection with my collection that's deepening by the day, it seems like. But anyway, never was able to find it. Again, I'm not the one to pay absorbent prices for no reason. And Auto World re-released this car. So I'm very, very happy that they did it. I missed... Uh, their other re-release a couple years ago or last year. So I found it and I actually found multiple. So I have backups. So here it is, 69 Chevrolet Kingswood Estate. This car is a loaded station wagon. These cars could come with V8s only, the Kingswood version anyway. So it's not a base car. It's gonna be based on the Impala Caprice for 1969. Kingswood would, would be a name for their wagons that lived on until about 1973. And then they were just kind of turned into wagon versions of the Bel Air, Impala, and Caprice on this full-size Chevy platform. This is a 1969. It's got the hideaway headlight grill. This is my first time owning this casting. And so I'm very excited. I've always wanted it. I kind of, a long time ago, before I got into the premium small cars because I used to just kind of dabble in some matchbox and hot wheels but I started getting strong into these but just right before that I didn't buy this I saw on the peg same thing with the country squire 
that 64 Galaxy wagon or the 60 or something, one of those wagons. I think I don't have that yet either, but I'm sure they'll re release that as well. These wheels have been out. These are actually, I believe these wheels came out on this car first, this casting first, and they kind of went out to the 66 Impala that they did too. They used the steel wheel. They're actually kind of trying to get us to believe that this wheel now is for their full wheel cover. So I'll remind you again, let's just look at the package. Trying to do those like full wheel covers. And if you don't paint the outside of the wheel, you can kind of do that. Of course, the Kingswood had those three tail lights back there too. Very cool. Now it says 427 on the plate, but reading up on these cars option wise, I think there was a six cylinder on the base car. But in this guys, I mean, it was basically their big engines. Um, it was uh, a 350. A 400 or a 454 uh, big block so basically that's what you could get there was three speed manuals on the base column shifted three speed but uh, more typically you had a turbo 350 hydromatic transmission from General Motors very strong training and in 69 that was the way to go so let's take a look we got the we'll zoom real quick I just want to show you the Chevrolet script that's on the hood line. There's no badging on the quarter, just on the back. And you'll see Kingswood Estate right there in script. You can see the bow ties done on the wheel covers. This has the nice tires that Auto World does. And the base is nice and deep. We'll look at that in a minute. Go to the back real quick. You'll see Chevrolet there printed. This tailgate had a power window in it. That would go up and down. There is your roof rack. Rolls good. Uh, one of the wheels is a little crooked on the axle, so I might take this one apart since I have two of them. I was able to find two. Black interior, bent seat car. They actually have the, the third row seat, jump seat, deployed. So you can see the back to back in there, kind of, sort of. There's your chassis. One of the good chassis. Got your dual exhaust system there. Uh, the transmission detail. Kind of faint up here. But once you got to the floor plan area and the gas tank, that looks really cool. Very awesome. So glad to have it. Another cool thing is this is all metal. It's not plastic. No, it's not plastic. It's everything is the whole casting. They have in the trim that little signal bulb right there that's really cool too so a lot of great stuff finally have this in person in my hands so very excited to have this 1969 kingswood look at that bad boy so hopefully i'll find more of those i think the and since this is the uh a version hopefully the b version shows up i believe that one is a completely all jet black car all right so, brand new casting, sort of, because actually we saw it on Bigfoot. And while I have it on my head, let me go get it off the shelf. This is the first time we saw this casting. It was on Bigfoot number five. So let's roll him in here real quick. Oh, we're going to have to raise the boom. <laughs> Camera boom. All right. So... There is our Ford casting. Let's take a look at it here. There it is. So this is going to be a 1996 Ford F-150 XLT. And very common. The base model for 96 was an XL, XLT, and then there's a Lariat addition too so all the way but xlt was very common you can get all the good drivetrains without having to get too much of the interior stuff and trim there's all your vehicles again so blue collar series debuted this um, casting in a stock form it's pretty much identical to the bigfoot casting um 
This, unfortunately, does have the plastic base, so spoiler alert, this is not metal, but I think it's because the fact that they're swapping this all over the place that uh, they did the plastic. And you could see the holes there. They could put, probably they're going to have, you know, plows and they might do the four-wheel drive. It'll stick into those holes there. Suspension that they put on. It's got green lights, newer tires. And I'd say they did the wheels perfect. There's no issues with uh, the holes being plugged with too much paint or the casting not going all the way through. So very, 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 very detailed wheels, I'd say. So, and the tampo work is good. And this is exactly how Ford had it. So in 1996, this body's been around for a little bit. 1992 was the first year they used this for an end. This is that kind of thing that Greenlight did. So this whole piece, including the grill, to my determination, is one piece. Of course, you could see the pins where it recesses into the body, but it's all plastic, and they'll tampo the signal bulb detail and the chrome and the black for the grill, but really it's a clear piece of, piece of plastic. Uh, the bumper is also a separate piece of plastic. And the rear bumper too. And we'll just paint the tail lights. So this one needs probably a little bit of touch up. I might actually go behind the headlights and get that um, pin painted from behind so it won't look so obvious. And then I might go and fix the black wash that is missing in the grill. And it should look a lot better. You can see the attention to detail that this one has on it. And that was just normal from the factory so you could see how much better it'll look once I get cleaned up but anyway there she is so 1996 this truck had a lot of different options you could do you could do an inline six with a stick shift and you could do a five liter v8 or a 351 v8 in the f-150 so very cool they put four sixties and stuff like that in the uh the F two fifty, F three fifty, and also they had, I believe, at this time it was a seven three Power Stroke diesel as well. Um, five liter motor, you could get a five speed stick shift still uh, in short and long bed. So a lot of fun stuff this truck would have had. You could have got nineteen ninety six two. Incidentally, was the last year for this body style, and it was the last year for the Ford Bronco on this chassis too. No more Bronco after 96. No, everything went into the Explorer and Expeditions and all that type of thing. So, plastic cap. Sits on there very nicely. It's got the four-wheel drive graphic done very good, too. It's that 4x4 Ford head. So, this is a good truck to have on a layout. Very, very stock looking. It looks like it would be on the side of the road anywhere. All over this great country. So, cool truck. Uh, first of this body for me. Again, this truck, it sits pretty good. A lot of these two-wheel drive trucks, at least as a four-wheel drive, would sit like this. But I would say this rear end needs to come up a little bit. Um, and really the front end, too, for it to be... a a, a little bit more believable as a 4x4. Four four. The half ton 4x4s four did sit up a lot, a lot taller than that, you know, unfortunately. So this is going to get a lift as well. I'm going to lift this thing. And uh, maybe make it look like an F250 because I like those looking better than the, than the regular half tons. So we'll see. Time will tell. <laughs> Time will tell. So, great little truck. Actually, this thing would probably look better with the utility trailer than uh, the Pontiac. Yeah, I'd say so. So, a little bit of a sampling today. A little bit of a sampling of some nice castings. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. And subscribing. More videos to come. We got a lot of cool cars coming towards the end of the year. So very excited to hopefully get those in the collection as soon as possible. Hope you enjoyed it. Take a little shot here. A lot of cars. Till next time.